evening and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Jay Pushkar. He's Mike Fenner. We gave Tom Decker another night off. We've reached the month of November, which means District 10 football postseason for some, buys for others, and the last week of the regular season games for the rest. We begin tonight's show in Class 5A with Cathedral Preps. Regular season already in the books. Mm -hmm. Now on to sub-regional play this evening at Dollinger Field. It's been a brutal week of weather around the area, but... That wasn't the case on Friday night, and what a start for the Ramblers. Brashear won the coin toss, opted to kick off, and it backfires in the worst way. Demario Crawford fields the short kickoff, shakes a couple tacklers, and then he goes 71 yards for the touchdown, just like that in 13 seconds. Cathedral Prep leads 7 to nothing. After Brashear went three and out, the Ramblers march right down the field. Satan Lewis with a first down carry and into Bulls territory. Next snap, it's Lewis on the carry. And all 5'7 of him stays on his feet, continues to gain yards after contact. What a run. A few plays later, Carter Barnes rolls out of the pocket, thinks about running it. Then he opts to find Tyson Simon for the touchdown. And just like that, 14-0 Cathedral Prep. Defensively, the Ramblers were certainly locked. Aiden Wentz comes off the block and off the edge, simply buries the quarterback for the sack. Prep would get two points on a safety thanks to a high snap on a punt attempt. So now 16-0 Prep, just over two minutes left in the opening quarter, and it's Lewis being shot out of a can and goes 82 yards untouched. Taking this one all the way to the house, making it look so easy. Cathedral Prep led 50 to nothing at one point in this contest. They advanced to the next round with a convincing 50 to 24 victory over Brashear. Shifting gears to the District 10 playoffs and the brackets head to the Class 2A where only one Erie County team was represented. That would be undefeated Northwestern. The Wildcats welcoming Wilmington to Southern Erie County this evening. To Edinburgh University Sox, Harrison Stadium we go in the 2A semifinals. The Wildcats need to be careful with running onto the field here in the smoke show taking on Wilmington. Opening half. Greyhounds on the doorstep. It's Ben Miller taking the snap, finding his way into the end zone. 7 0. Greyhounds there. Wildcats answering, though, through the air. Big fourth and seven here. And it's Ryan Tool downfield. Connects with Eric Steinley for the huge first down reception there. That'll set it up for the Wildcats in the red zone. Tool calling his own number here from three yards out. He's going to punch it in on the quarterback keeper and ties this up at 7 all. Wilmington going to respond, though. Tough McConaughey, his real name, with the swing pass to the flat here, finding Luke Edwards for the touchdown. Greyhounds, 14-7 lead in the second quarter. Northwestern responding, though, and it's in the air. Again, here, Tool to Jake Kelly on the screen. Fourth down, they'll pick it up, and Kelly's going to do the rest here, going all the way to the house. It's a 25-yard score, 14-14 at the break. Second half, Wilmington. A huge, lengthy drive to open the third quarter, and a quarterback keeper here, McConaughey, going to score here as Wilmington takes the one-score lead. Then they're going to pitch it to Luke Edwards going down the sideline after a Wildcat turnover. Greyhounds starting to pull away as Edwards goes 65 yards to Pater, 28-14 Wilmington at this point. Wildcats still putting up a fight, though. Tool going to look for his favorite target. That's Steinle again, this time right sideline, back of the end zone for the touchdown. But the night belonged to Wilmington here. They pull out all the stops. Halfback option pays off on the reverse pass there and score. Wilmington outscoring Northwestern 41-21. Wildcats with their only loss all year as their season comes to an end at 7-1 in the 2A semifinals. Down the stretch, Wilmington made some great plays. They made some splash plays, and that ended up being the difference. You know, I, I thought that, you know, early on uh, we were hanging right with them. We made a couple of mistakes. I'd love to have back, but uh, I'm proud of the way my team played tonight. This kind of game losing this way hurts. Just not because you lose to Wilmington, who is an excellent program and deserves the win, because you got to say goodbye to those kids. You know, they're not in your program anymore. I, I just told them the same thing. You know, that I heard as a kid from Coach Budaszewski, and I heard from Mike Mishler, uh, two really important men in my life, is losing a playoff game. If that's the worst thing that ever happens to you, you're gonna have a really good life. Congrats on a great season to Northwestern in the opposite District 10 to a semifinal. Farrell steamrolls past Greenville by the final of 60-14. to 14. It's Farrell and Wilmington for D10 and 2A next week. Down to Meadville's Bender Field we go. Class A semifinal between Cochranton and Maplewood. We'll jump to the second quarter. Maplewood's Logan Kennedy drops back and gets dropped immediately, fumbling the ball, and the ball is recovered by the Cardinals' Stephen Martinek. 
However, on the ensuing possession, Conkerton facing a fourth and an uncomfortable. Noah Cummings off play action goes over the top to Blake Falk for the touchdown. 28 yards on the play, 7-0 Cardinals. Later on, Dominic Kenny punts for the Tigers, and it goes right to Conkerton's playmaker. What a season he's had. Jack Martinick returns this one 59 yards to pay dirt, and it's now a two-score lead. Maplewood would not be outdone, though. They counter on the next drive. Ben Giliberto with a two-yard touchdown plunge, but it's Conkerton holding on for the victory, 14-12, as they advance to the Class A championship game. Who would they face? For that, we go to the other semifinal game from Carter Field in Titusville. Eisenhower against Reynolds, opening quarter, and the Knights knocking on the door. Sean Pascuzzi gets the rock and scores game tied up at six apiece. Raiders come right back, though. Clayton Rhodes simply bursts out of the backfield, shows off his speed and agility. Reynolds back in front with a seven-point lead. Then just before the half, the Raiders would convert on a short field goal attempt. They would lead this one 17-6 at the break. On to the third quarter of play now. Jalen Wagner gets his number called. And this tailback knifes his way through that defense. He's going to go untouched all the way to the end zone. Reynolds starting to find its groove. Then Wagner on the touchdown reception here. And it's Reynolds knocking off Eisenhower, 56 to 27. Shifting gears now to non-region football at Saxon Stadium. Campus of Mercyhurst University, Mercyhurst Prep, and Lakeview finishing their years tonight. Both teams hoping to close out with a victory here. Opening half for the Lakers, David Baum bombs away. Josh Wingenbach for the touchdown back of the end zone there. Baum becoming the program's all-time leading leader in passing yards for the season in this game. Lakers led 12-0 in the second half. Sailors would go on the move and. Drew Galarno scores the uh, quick touchdown there. Lakeview down 12 to 6. More from the Sailors and more power running for a first down here that will set it up for Lakeview and Gavin Murdoch as he's going to take this one in and a second half surge for Lakeview as they go on to beat Mercer's Prep tonight 28 21. The final. One last regular season game for the Corey Beavers and Gerard Yellow Jackets and the Beavers notch their first win of the season outscoring Gerard. 45 to 21. Here's the Saturday high school football playoff schedule for you tomorrow. Class 4A semifinals, Harbor Creek against Meadville at 7 p.m. from Edinburgh University. Meanwhile, the other semi is General McLean against Warren down at Titusville at 7 p.m. And Class 3A Fairview takes on Grove City at Greenville High School, while the winner will get the winner of Hickory and Sharon. That's a 7 o'clock start at Wilmington High School. Day one of the PIAA Girls Tennis State Tournament. Opening round results in Class 3A and 2A singles and doubles. Fairview's Trinity Fox fell to Grace Lee in straight sets. 6-1, six, 6-love. Six, the McDowell doubles team of Samantha Becker and Nabia Bati dropped their Class 3A quarterfinal match in straight sets of 7-5 and 6-2. Excuse me, that was an opening round match for them. Meanwhile, in Class 2A, Villa Maria's Anna Peransky advanced to the quarterfinals only to lose in that round in straight sets. And in Class 2A doubles, the Villa Maria tandem of Anne Marie Pritchard and Abby Consiglio picked up two wins, and they have now advanced to the state semifinals on Saturday morning. Still to come on Friday Night Lights, we'll hit the ice with the Mercyhurst hockey team as they are back home at the mid. That plus much more coming your way next here on FNL.